Welcome to the Cadian Live video workshop series. I've been meaning to start this for some time in hopes that version 1.0 was to release, and I know that there is progress being made on the project, it's just that it's running at a snail's pace presently. But I had a lot of demand from my viewers who really wanted to see a complete series on this. So we're going to be using the Cadian Live user manual, and I'm going to be going through all of the stuff, steps covered in the manual with the addition of additional things. So this is going to be the mother load for you guys, because I'm going to be showing you all of my tips and tricks for getting the best out of your videos. Not only, you know, creating content within the Cadian Live user interface, maybe even doing some uh, compositing, which is an example you see on the screen here, maybe some uh, color adjustments and that sort of thing. We're also going to go through creating some of your own effects stacks, as well as using your own favorite image editor. Some people like to use the GIMP. I use Macromedia Fireworks 8, which is an old version of Fireworks, but it does the job. It does the job well. And I use this for creating all of my titles and putting up graphics that I use in my productions. The, I uh, export them as PNG, and then I can uh, import those into Cadian Live for later use. Additionally, we're going to have fun with Audacity. We're going to take some screen capture files, and we're going to uh, clean up the audio so that you can get the best possible sound to bring into your productions. We're going to remove old audio uh, from existing clips, and we're going to sync them with freshly prepared audio. Finally, we're also going to touch base on getting the most out of your titling using Blender. And the nice thing about Blender is you can create some pretty crafty 3D titles, animations, and that sort of thing that you can pull into Cadian Live uh, by just simply exporting a, a PNG or image sequence, and then Cadian Live will bring that in for you and then you can add sound and all kinds of other fun things so this is going to be a comprehensive course not just covering the basics of Cadian Live we're going to be also covering a bunch of other things in this series with all of that out of the way let's go ahead and jump into our virtual machine and we'll go ahead and get started I'm running a fresh install of Manharo Linux everything is completely updated and ready to rumble that's something I always recommend when using Acadian Live or you're installing something new. Always make sure your system is up to date. Always a wise idea. Now, something to keep in mind during this series, I am going to be covering everything in the Acadian Live manual that you see here. This is at userbase kde.org slash Cadian Live slash manual. I highly recommend that you visit this website. There will be a link in the show notes below. So that will take you directly to this page, and I highly recommend that you bookmark this because I am going to be going through everything in this manual for the most part, with the exception of possibly um, using Firewire. You know, any, any technologies that I don't have actual access to, I'm probably not going to be able to cover in this series. However, I will be covering a bunch of other things, such as content creation through third-party tools. And uh, that's an important thing uh, that I do when I use Cadian Live. So uh, I'm going to make sure to give that a lot of coverage on the show. But at any rate, the first thing you're going to want to do is install this. And by clicking the install link here, it will give you some instructions for the different types of distributions you may be using, such as uh, a Debian or Ubuntu derivatives. Okay, and I can tell you for most Debian and Ubuntu deriv derivatives, you may not have the latest release. So you're going to need to click this link here to add a PPA if you're on an Ubuntu-based system. And if you're on a Debian-based system, this will help you generate some lines that you can add to your sources through Synaptic so that you can download the latest release, which happens to be 0.9.6. The same thing for Fedora, Red Hat, and derivatives. You may need to use RPM, Fusion, or Pac-Man. And follow the site's recommendation to install and then yum install Kadian Live. 
And for those of you running Gen 2, Arch, BSD, uh, well, I know for a fact Gen 2 and Arch, uh, you emerge or uh, use Pac-Man to install these packages. You are getting the latest and greatest because uh, Arch and Gen 2, I know for a fact, have bleeding edge or cutting edge packages. Not so sure about BSD, so you will have to go through your vendor if you use BSD on not a BSD guy. <laughs> sorry. Okay, and if you're Windows, eh, sorry, there is not a version of Windows. They do have a link to Linux distributions to run KDN Live on Windows. However, um, when I clicked this link, it did not give any suggestions. And uh, this link um, uh, has a forum page where you can go to to get KDN Live for Windows. Mac OS X, this will run uh, through Mac Ports Project. Follow the link here, and it'll get you where you need to be, of course. Uh, for those of you who really want to get your hands dirty and you know how to build things from source, uh, you don't need me to tell you how to do that. If you like building things from source, you probably already know how to do that. So, cool de deal indeed. And then, of course, there is the daily builds. Uh, this is a nice place to go if you want to get 097. Uh, there are daily builds uh, that are made, and uh, you can uh, visit this RSS feed here, and uh, you can download uh, a, a tarball and then extract it, and then there is a script that you would just simply run. Uh, I've tried it myself. It works on Manharo. It's designed to work with uh, Debian-based distros, but... Um, I understand it also works with Fedora and that sort of thing. So it's worth your, worth your chance to give this a try if you want to non-destructively try Kadian Live without installing it to your system. Okay, so with all that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and cover my uh, next thing before we get the installation started. And this is uh, every video that I produce in this series will be placed not only on YouTube and Daily Motion. I will be creating project files that will go with many videos in this series. And I will mention that in each video topic if there is a project file. So you would visit Spatry's forum. That is at www.cupoflinux.com. Just go to Spatry's forum. Okay. And if you are signed in to the forum, you will notice there is a section on the bottom called tutorials if you are not logged in and you are not registered on the forums you will not be able to see this section any unread topics show as light blue whereas red topics show as gray this is a very nice forum also because uh, i have a number of people that are always sharing great news information i have people putting up tutorials and all kinds of fun things on the to uh, on this forum so it's a great place to come in hang out uh we've got uh music entertainment a little bit of everything uh to entertain those of you in the linux world so you'll definitely want to check out couple of linux.com and as stated uh, in the tutorial section here uh, this is the KDN live video workshop series and any video related to this series will be placed in here I already have uh, an information and request section so if there's something you want to see in this video series please visit this link and place a post on what it is you would like to see Okay, and then I also have uh, information on prior releases. There are other videos that I put up in KDN Live for those of you who want to jump ahead and get your hands dirty. Okay, let's go ahead and close our browser now. And we'll proceed to the next step. Let's open up a terminal, in this case, and I'm going to type in sudo pacman tac s KDN Live. It'll ask for your password. I happen to like Phonon G Streamer. So I'm going to select that one. And this is going to download all of the dependencies that this will require. It looks like there are a number of packages, 70 megs to download with 229 megs fully installed. Not too bad. Now that Caden Live has finished installing, let's have a look at some things. Okay. GTK2 is installed. That means if you are using GTK2 theming, then KDN Live will be able to match your color scheme that you have on your system by default. Also, Ladspa is installed. 
but none of its plugins are installed. And you're going to need those if you want to do some pretty cool audio effects from within Cadian Live. Let's go ahead and open the program now. That would be under Multimedia. And then we have Cadian Live. For those of you using XFCE with the Whisker menu, you can right-click onto this and add to favorites. Alternatively, you can take an item and you can drag it up and place it on your panel and create a special launcher for it, like I just did here. Okay, so now, with this program opening up, you're going to get a dialog that's going to appear, and 096 is the version you want to be running in this series. Okay, we're going to press Next. You want to make sure we've got MLT in here, and it's using version 090 in this particular install. We've got check marks on everything. Okay, and then we have different formats as well. We're not going to worry about this right now, because before we get into any re real video editing, we're going to cover adding some additional things to get the most out of this. Okay, now by default, I always like to select HDV, and in my case, I always choose 720p at 29.97 frames per second, which is the NTSC standard in the United States. You can choose any format that is applicable to you. Uh, I can tell you 1080p uses a lot of processor, and my poor computer, even though it is a quad-core, it just uh, cries when I try to render 1080p. So 720 is always good enough for me. Okay, and then I want this to show video thumbnails, and I want it to show audio thumbnails, so I'm going to keep this checked. I want to make sure that Activate Crash Recovery Autosave is enabled as well, because Cadian Live does crash. And the nice thing is that if you saved your project from the very beginning, if it does crash, it will allow you to recover and start right where you left off. And then, of course, install extra video mime types can be handy as well. Okay, I don't have any capture devices plugged in here, but the thing is, if you do have a webcam or you have a camcorder that's plugged in through your USB and you have it working properly, you can press the check button and then a drop-down menu will give you that option so that you can capture video from an external device. I use my cell phone for capturing my green screen footage and I import that through my web browser separately so I don't use Cadian Live for this particular feature. Okay, now we do not have DV Grab required for Firewire capture installed. I don't even use Firewire any longer. Okay, you can install a DVD author for creation of a DVD. This is something we can do at a later time. Okay, and then of course uh, we can also uh, install Gen ISO Image or MKIOFS required for creation of DVD ISO images. We can get to these parts later. Now once this is open, this is your standard layout, which pretty is pretty basic but the nice thing about this is you can customize this to look however you want it okay and uh, we'll get to that in a little bit here you have effects list listing here and you'll see you'll have some audio effects but not really a lot of them to do things with you also have alpha manipulation in here and this has the key spill mop up um, you also have the blue screen effects and alpha operations. So if you're seeing these, you're running the latest and greatest Freeger plugins. And those are going to be nece necessary for those of you who are doing some compositing, as I'm going to cover heavily in this series. Okay, so we're looking pretty good here. But let's say we want to alter this to balance our workflow a little bit. Okay, by default, you get three video and two audio, but you can change this by going into your settings here and then configuring Cadian Live. Okay, and you can set your project defaults. For instance, how many video tracks do you want? You can change that to as many the, 
the possibilities are endless. You can have an unlimited number of video tracks and an num unlimited number of audio tracks. Personally, I'll stick with the three video to audio. That works fine for me. You have miscellaneous things here. You can open the last project on startup if you wish to. You can check if uh, the first added uh, video clips match the profile. I usually uncheck this because I'm mixing and matching different clips and I don't like to get bugged by the software because it will interpolate when it goes through the rendering process to uh, give you the correct amount. So let's say you imported a uh, 30 frame per second video and a 24 frame per second video. When you put these on your timeline, it will interpolate it and correct everything for you. So you can mix and match them. I haven't had any issues with that. Okay, you can use KDE job tracking tracking for rendering jobs and that is something that's really cool about Katie and live because while you are rendering a piece of video you can actually be uh, editing video at the same time personally I don't use that feature but it is available to you you can uh, use on monitor effects disable parameters there are a lot in the listing here Okay, you can uh, manage your timeline as we already discussed your video and audio plus the channels and then normalize audio for the thumbnails. Keep that one checked. Display clip marker comments if you wish to have comments on your clip markers. We'll cover that at a later portion of time. Your environment. Now, this is great for those of you who have multi core computers. Okay. This covers proxy clips, and in a later part of the series, we're going to talk about making proxy clips so that you can see your videos as you're editing them in real time. It'll make uh, smaller clips so that you're not getting stuttering when you're playing back on the timeline. You can also set your the number of processing threads that this has. I'm using a dual-core virtual machine, so the maximum number it's going to give me is two. For right now, we're going to leave that at one. You're going to set all of your capture preferences references here and we'll cover these later but this is everything you need right here okay so let's go ahead and start maybe moving some things around here for instance the effects list here I really don't like that here I prefer to have that over on the right so I can grab this by clicking on the title and I can drag and position this where I want it so having your effects lifts on the right has some advantages let's go ahead and create a uh, color clip for instance and a uh, five second color clips fine by me we'll drag that down the timeline here and now we can maybe uh, add a sepia tone to that just drag that and put it on the clip and then we can easily adjust this to our liking and uh, give it any tone color shape and that sort of thing and we'll get into shaping these later so you can do an awful lot with this. So I like having a workflow like this. And then maybe going into view and then having our audio uh, waveform showing. Uh, not the waveform, I'm sorry. Audio signal. I love this one. We can drag this one over to the left here. That's a nice, as nice of a place as any to put it. And so you got a layout that you can use make it easier for you to work and then you can just go into view save layout as save as layout one name it we'll call this test press ok and then when you go into view and then load layout you have test here and you have up to four different layouts that you can set up which is very very useful so uh, it's a good thing indeed and uh, this happens to be the way I like to have things set up uh, for me but you know to each his own so move those windows around however you would like and then once you have the layout appearance that you uh, want then you can uh, actually hide the, uh, you can hide the uh, move buttons by right-clicking on one of the tabs. See how I did that there? Just right-clicking on a tab and then maybe uh, resize and reposition and that sort of thing. I usually like to have my monitor a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. So that usually works for me there. Okay, and then we'll go back into view, save a layout as, save as test. 
Okay. And boom, it's saved. So there you go. All right, but we want to add more functionality to this, as indicated, because in the audio stacks here, you really don't have that many features. And maybe you might want to add reverb and that sort of thing later on down the line. Let's go file and save this, because we're going to come back to that later. And we're just going to call this test. And then the next thing we're going to do is close this. Opening our package manager, you can be using Synaptic or whichever package manager uh, that comes loaded on your system. In uh, Manjaro, we have PAMIC. We're going to search for some plugins here. And the first search I'm going to do is for GStreamer. I highly recommend installing these packages simply for the fact that it's going to give you a lot of... Uh, a lot of things that you could uh, benefit from for playing video files. Now, you'll see by default on Manharo, it looks like we've got GST plugins bad, base, base libs, good, and ugly. Uh, I highly recommend having those. GStreamer, GStreamer 1.0, uh, bad, bad plugins, base, base plugins. GStreamer FFmpeg. You also have the good. And, of course, I have the ugly plugins in here as well. So you'll want to make sure you have those plugins installed. And if you get lost here, please pause the video, go back. You want to make sure you have the GST plugins bad, good, and ugly. And uh, the GStreamer uh, 010 bad, base, FFmpeg, good and ugly as well. This will pretty much uh, allow you to play most multimedia titles and since this does have a GStreamer backend it couldn't hurt to have these loaded with this. And then next for having the complete audio plugin sets you need to do a search for LADSPA. L-A-D-S-P-A. -A. Okay, we're going to press enter here and then you're going to see there are a number of plugins. There are the AMB plugins, a set of uh, ambisonic plugins. Okay, why not? We're going to just install all of them. You have Blop, Band Limited, Lad Spa, Oscillator plugins. There are some details possibly on these. And if there are no details, you can click the links and find out what they are and decide if those are suitable. I'm just going to go ahead and go through these and install them. Another plugin suite and standalone Jack host. So you'll probably want to get CAF if you're going to be using Jack with KD and Live. I've never used Jack with KD and Live and I probably, probably won't see any need to do so. Okay, um, you also have a C Audio plugin suite. Let's grab that one as well. Okay, there's CMT for LADSPA. Okay, and as I said, if you don't know, just click the links. I'm just going to go ahead and install the mother load here. A four-band parametric equalizer. That can come in very handy when editing audio from within Cadian Live. So, you know, you won't have to use a third-party program like Audacity if you just want to do some simple things. Okay, you have LV2 plugins. Let's go ahead and add them. Why not? Uh, MCP. More goodness here. Okay, you want stereo reverb? You're definitely going to want to grab that one as well. You have uh, Steve Harris's plugin suite. You have uh, Tom's Ladspa plugins. VCO plugins. And wah plugins. What do that 1970 sound? Get them wah wah plugins. Okay, and then just uh, check to install these. Okay, and it's going to pull down all of these plugins for us. It'll ask you for your password. And. Though we're showing this on PEMIC, uh, you should be able to do this in your package manager on your respective distro, such as Synaptic, if you're uh, using a, uh, a, a, package, a similar package manager. And look how quickly those uh, install. So let's go ahead and close this. And now when we open up Kadian Live again, you're going to see that we have a ton of plugins now. If we go into our audio here, 
and you're going to see, wow, look at that list of plugins you got with this now. So pretty much you're going to have the mother load of plugins for doing some really, really cool things with this. Because I know I like to save a little bit of time myself rather than open up an Audacity if I just grab an audio plugin and I can just drag that onto an audio clip. It's an excellent time saver. Okay, well, that's all I have on this introduction to Cadian Live video. Tomorrow's episode, we're going to be visiting uh, the Cadian Live manual website, and I'm going to do the quick start tutorial here. So for those of you who want to jump ahead, just go ahead and check that out. There are some project files you'll need to download, but I'm going to take this a step further. We downloaded some really cool plugins for Cadian Live, and I want to put them to the test. So we are going to be uh, doing some interesting things with uh, the project files that are provided by Cadian Live. Uh, but I'm going to take it an, a little step further. And if any of you have any questions in this series, please be sure to visit cupoflinux.com. Uh, and uh, all you do is just click Spatry's forum. And uh, if you are not signed up, you're going to need to sign up to be able to uh, interact on the forum here. Uh, there's a simple question on the page where you answer a question about these this little colored banner at the bottom of the screen to prove that you're not a robot. And then you will see the tutorial section on the bottom. And any video that's created here uh, will appear in the Cadian Live Video Workshop series. Because this is being simulcast on YouTube and Daily Motion, plus the fact that I have uh, almost 480 plus videos on YouTube. It is impossible for me to keep up with all the comments that are flooded in. This is why I have created this special section where you can interact with yours truly and I will come in daily. I will uh, check your comments and I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. You can also place uh, any requests for things that you want to see in this series and I'll be happy to answer those questions as well. And of course, if you find this series to be useful to you, please consider clicking the donate button on the bottom right corner of the screen. This will help me to keep this series free. I was considering doing some paid modules for this, but I've decided I'm going to keep it free. And if you don't have any coins to shout through the donate button, please, con please consider disabling your ad blockers uh, when watching the videos. You'll not only be helping me, but you'll also be helping all of the content creators out there on YouTube and Dailymotion who are creating content for you to enjoy. That's all I've got for now. Peace out. Thank you.